Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com. Welcome to the headphone show. And today we're going to talk all about this. This is the gold planar GL 1200. Yes, another gold planar. And this is an over ear open back ribbon driver headphone. Let's check it out. Okay, so as usual, a quick disclaimer here. This was sent to me by Lin Sol for evaluation. A big thanks to Lin Sol for sending it along, but I've not been paid to say anything in particular about it, and all thoughts and opinions are my own. Now, before we get into the review, some of you guys may have seen the live stream that I did on this headphone. It's a more recent live stream, and uh, I gave my first impressions, and I was really not impressed. And I kind of, I've kind of changed my mind on this. I've come around on it a little bit, and I'll explain why. So let's just get into it. The Gold Planar GL1200. Uh, comes in right at around $1,400. And so this is not a cheap headphone. This is a very expensive high-end headphone. Um, and it also requires a speaker amplifier to be able to drive it. Now it does come with this interface here that allows you to connect to the speaker outputs on the back of a speaker amplifier. Uh, and you can see that right here. So one is for left, one is for right. And then uh, it plugs in on the in, on the this side right here. They give you this cable right here, which is actually a really nice cable. It feels actually quite high quality and um, not it doesn't tangle all that much and in, it is terminated in a uh, balanced XLR four pin and that just connects into the front here of the interface and then you have this hooked up to the speaker amplifier. Now, I'd been running this off of the uh, SPL S800, which is actually way more power than what the max power is for this this device. So you got to kind of run it pretty low. So you know, I think you'd be able to run this with a, a number of a, a fairly wide variety of speaker amplifiers. I don't think you need to go you know that crazy. Um, but still, it does require a speaker amplifier and not a conventional headphone amplifier, which does make it a bit of a barrier there for people who are used to using traditional headphone amplifiers or they have regular headphone amplifiers. So right away, I think the audience for this is, you know, the folks who are a little bit more interested in, they have a speaker amp already and they have speakers and they want to get a headphone and run it off their speaker amplifier. I don't know if it would make that much sense to go and buy a separate speaker amplifier just for this headphone. Um, and I'll explain why when we get into the sound. But nonetheless, the build, design, and comfort of this headphone are fairly interesting. This is a large headphone and yeah, I don't mind that it's large and I don't mind, in fact, it's huge. I'm just gonna put it out there. Uh, I don't mind that. And it's also surprisingly not that heavy. This weighs only around 535 grams, which for normal headphones is quite heavy, but you know, in the space, in the audiophile space where we're dealing with, you know, Odyssey headphones that are over 600 grams and, you know, some other headphones out there like the Head Audio headphone that are even heavier than that, uh, 535 is really not that bad. And I find that the comfort is pretty good on this. It doesn't really weigh down on my head all that much. I can wear this. I actually got through the majority of a day wearing this. Um, and it's also, th it's thankfully aided by some massive pads, huge pads. And they, they give you two sets here. And I'll talk about this in a little bit. Uh, the pad opening is also enormous here. So, you know, you don't get any weird, uh, you know, compression on the side of your ear or anything like that. And there's no hot spots on top. I actually really like the headband design as well. Like this, this piece feels comfortable. It feels sturdy. The clicks feel satisfying, just like on the GL2000. But one last thing before getting into the sound is that uh, the pads here, they are Velcro. So they do just peel right off and you can kind of see into where the ribbon is uh, for this. And so, you know, if you want to switch out the pads, it is just Velcro. I'm personally not a huge fan of Velcro because, well, in this case, because when you put it back on, there's no guarantee that it's gonna be in the exact same symmetrical spot. So you kind of just have to eyeball it and get close enough. Um, but the other reason is you're, not, you're never gonna get a proper seal in between the pad and the headphone portion. Um, but thankfully, uh, the base on this does not drop out like it does on the RAL SR1A. So you do actually get really good base extension here. Now, how they're able to achieve that has more to do with the driver and the diaphragm than anything to do with coupling to the side of the head. So it's a different way of doing it. And I'm going to get into the subjective stuff and talk all about you know technical performance and detail retrieval and how this compares to the SR1A because it's really the main comparison. But before doing that, let me just kind of get into the objective data here. And this... It's gonna be a weird one, guys. As usual, if you're totally unfamiliar with how to read headphone measurements and frequency response, I've left a video in the description for how you can uh, make sense of this stuff. And I'm gonna throw the graphs up on the screen here for you guys to take a look. Um, but you know, just 
keep in mind that the target that I'm using here, the dotted line, that's just a known data point. It's a known reference point. And again, if that still sounds super unfamiliar to you, I've done a whole video on why this target is important. But nonetheless, uh, looking at the gold planar GL1200, I'm gonna actually show you guys the measurements of both pads because they do measure very differently. You got these sort of leather ones here with perforated uh, perforations in it, and then you get these more velour pads. Um, and I'm gonna tell you right now, with the velour pads, it measures quite a bit better. Still really weird, but uh, quite a bit better. And with the uh, with these perforated leather ones, it measures shockingly bad. In the sense that this is like no ear gain whatsoever. Um, I don't think there, that much thought was even given to the tuning whatsoever with these pads here. You basically get a completely flat frequency response, flat in this in, in a raw graph, which is not what you want, up until around like 6K, and then it, you know that's where it elevates, and then the rest, like the treble, is just gone after that. Um, so it's a very strange frequency response. It sounds very muted, muffled, congested, thick, muddy, unpleasant with these pads, uh, and not at all something that is remotely competitive. I don't think that this is as congested sounding or compressed sounding as the. GL2000, because that one elevated around 5K, and that was where the primary imbalance was. Whereas around 6K, you're not getting the same harmonic imbalance. You, you are getting a harmonic imbalance with these pads for sure, but it's it's not the same as what you get at 5K. And so, and plus, you know, the, the upper treble is not as crazy either. So, you know, there are certain things that might make this a little bit more of a pleasant listen without EQ with these pads, but I still think they're not even at all worth even considering for uh, for frequency response. You can find headphones that cost like $200 that sound better than this. Um, so, uh, you know, I just, I don't think that is at all worth it um, unless you do EQ and we'll get into that. Now it gets interesting when you get to these pads where things are very different. You'll notice with the velour pads here that you get quite a bit of honk in the mid range uh, with that really strange looking boost. And the way that this sounds is it's, it's quite nasally for certain things, nasally for vocals, um, but actually the fact that it has ear gain there in a much more appropriate manner than what you get with these perforated leather ones means that the overall tonal balance here is not that bad. Like it's it's not great. There's certainly a lot better out there at this price, but you know the ear gain is better. The treble presentation is better. In fact, just everything about it is better with these velour pads. Now in both cases, this is so, this frequency response of this headphone is so strange that I think, you know, you'd, you'd want to EQ this. I initially thought, mm, I don't know if I was even going to bother EQing this because this also showed some really strange uh, distortion characteristics, especially for the bass and then the lower mids, where you have a massively boosted uh, or elevated third harmonic distortion, third and fifth. It almost looks kind of like what you get with like a balanced armature driver, um, definitely to the audible threshold. So it kind of made me hesitant to even bother doing EQ with this to get it much more in line with how headphones should measure or get you know reasonably close to you know something that's a lot more agreeable and more balanced sounding and because you know I, kn I knew that I was going to need to do quite a bit of adjustment there um, and one of the worries when you see that kind of distortion behavior is like well if you if you're going to boost that if you're going to boost certain elements you know are you going to introduce some some distortion there and uh, thankfully it doesn't really it doesn't change all that much when you you know EQ stuff in the upper ranges in the mids and in the treble um, in the bass yeah it does it does so I wouldn't EQ the bass on this but the other interesting thing about the distortion characteristics here are that you do actually get kind of expected behavior with this driver type I'm told that this is actually kind of normal um, for this but I don't really have that much to compare it to because again the only other ribbon driver headphone that I've heard is the RAL SR1A uh, which also didn't really have anywhere near the kind of bass response that this does. So the big win for the GL1200 is that it is a ribbon driver headphone that does have really good bass extension, even though the bass quality is not, not what you want. And um, I think this is actually an example, as we'll get into with the subjective stuff, where everything about it objectively is bad. Like the, the measurements in every way are bad <laughs> with this headphone. But subjectively, it's interesting um, in a way that, yeah, it's made me change my mind about this. After spending more time with it and after, you know, doing some EQ, I actually kind of like it. <laughs> and I have no real way of explaining this quality other than leaning heavily into these subjective terms. So let me get into that next. So I'm going to begin by talking about 
detail and microdynamics and sort of the clarity for trailing ends of tones. And for that quality, the GL1200 still isn't particularly good. It is good in the mids and in the treble, it's totally fine there, but the lower registers, there's a hint of the sort of, you know, bluntedness or limitation to the microdynamic quality or the, the clarity of trailing ends of tones and things like that. It, it doesn't really sound like it's properly resolving stuff the way that, you know, an LCD X might, right? And even when I was comparing it against the LCD X, this doesn't have that sort of like sharpness and immediacy that those headphones do or other competing, you know, highly detailed headphones do. But there is a way that this presents the details such that they kind of pop out in a more textured manner, which is a, it's a very interesting presentation, uh, especially for the mids and, the, and then the treble. So when you EQ this to a much more appropriate frequency response, you know, regardless of the pads that you're using, you do get a very nuanced presentation for the details. It's almost like there's this sort of like layering and layered quality to, to the way that the details are presented. And I think it has more to do with the sense of space, stage, and the way that stuff sort of pops out at you. And maybe that's more to do with actually the fact that these are physically huge cups. So that kind of has this all enveloping, all encompassing, uh, you know, effect. And that in my mind is the quality that I'm most interested in here. Again, I don't want to say impressed because this is not like an HD800S. The HD800S is definitely more detailed than this. It's more the way that this does it. And I, I really can't describe it in any other way than kind of giving a picture of kind of what I'm seeing mentally for the images that pop out. And I know we're talking about sound, but people are very visually oriented. So I'm going to give this description and you guys are going to have to take it with a massive grain of salt because I have nothing really to back this up other than the fact that this is just how I hear this. It sounds like, you know, sometimes images are coming from like behind you and then above you. And when stuff pans from one side to the other, it's a very, very fine grained pan. Like you can hear every tiny little change of of localization, I guess, um, with this headphone. And again, I, I'm suspecting that this has more to do with how massive this is than anything else. But it's a really interesting quality and one that I do think is worth exploring. It's, it's, a, it's a subjective quality that I think is enjoyable. Now, in addition to that, you know, this might not be the most detailed or the, the sharpest or most incisive, you know, sounding headphone, but there is a kind of naturalness or effortlessness that reminds me of the HD100S. Again, HD100S is definitely more detailed than this. You know, this has that, again, that sort of bluntedness to the trailing ends of tones that those other ones don't. You know, this doesn't have the crispness or the immediacy or the attack that I personally look for in headphones. But the naturalness of this, and the effortlessness of this does make it, again, an interesting presentation and one that I can get behind. So there was a sense of appeal or enjoyment here where I'm able to just sort of like throw it on and listen and, you know, after EQ, of course, and get the tonality right. But I can actually just sit back and listen and enjoy and not think about the details and not think about, you know, all the rest of that stuff and just sort of have this headphone and envelop me in a lot of ways. This is one that, again, I've sort of changed my mind on and I've come around to actually appreciating this for the qualities that it does have and what it does do well, which again is space, stage, and that sort of naturalness, um, even though it's, it's not as good as the competition for, you know, detail and incisiveness, you know, the sharpness and crispness that you might get. Okay, so before giving my conclusion, I'm just going to compare this to the RAL SR1A because everybody wants to know how does this compare. It is not close for detail. Uh, no, honestly, not even in the same ballpark whatsoever. Um, it is competitive for the sense of space, stage, separation. Absolutely, it is competitive there. And this does have way better bass extension. The bass tuning on this is actually the one really good part of its tuning. Uh, so, you know, it does have good bass extension at the cost of maybe not the best bass quality. And that's again where I think the RAL does a better job, but with the RAL, it rolls off in the bass. You might be able to get it a little better, but you won't be able to get it to extend the way that this does. And as I mentioned, I don't have really any other ribbon driver headphones to compare this to. so. Um, I think that's really going to do it for the comparisons because this is so unique. At around this price, there are a number of different headphones that you could get, like for example, the Odyssey LCD X. I mean, you could get the LCD 2, Focal Clear, Sennheiser HD 800S is around this price, a little more expensive. So there are a number of different headphones out there that I think, you know, I would I would have an easier time recommending over the GL 1200, specifically because with those ones, they're much more normal headphones that don't require this kind of interface. 
um, and they don't require a speaker amplifier, much more convenient to use. But if you're somebody who already has a speaker amplifier and you're considering getting a pair of headphones that has a unique presentation with a unique driver technology and you're comfortable doing EQ, then this is going to get a cautious recommendation. And I say cautious again because this is not going to win on any one particular category. But the way that this presents music, especially with sort of that space and stage and enveloping quality that it has, um, you really got to be, I guess, looking for that. Um, but if you are, then this is a very interesting presentation. So again, this is almost kind of like a tech demo in a way, but it's one that is interesting enough to merit uh, investigation. It makes me curious what other headphones of this driver type would sound like, you know, maybe if they were tuned a little bit better. So without EQ, I've got a hard time recommending this. With EQ, this is, this is a unique enough presentation to where I think it's worth a listen uh, at the very least. Now, as I mentioned, I have done EQ profiles for this headphone with both the pads. And I'll leave those linked in the description or leave a link to that in the description where you can check that out. If you have this headphone or if you're considering getting it, uh, definitely give those EQ profiles a try and let me know what you think. Actually, I'm curious what your thoughts are. Anyways, that does it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.